Well, good day, everybody. Still sitting here in Calgary on my reset. As of right now, I've been here for exactly 31 hours and two minutes. Now, in Canada, it's a little bit different than the US. In the US, in order to reset your logbooks and gain another 70 hours of work for the next eight days, in Canada, I have to stop for 36 hours to reset my logbook, and then I get another 70 hours that I can use in seven days before I start recapping. A little bit different than the US, but it's similar along the same lines. So in 36 hours, I'm officially reset for Canada and the US. It's another five hours. At that time, it's gonna be 10.30 p.m. I have an appointment first thing tomorrow morning. Well, not first thing, but I have an appointment in the morning in Airdrie, Alberta, which is on the other side of Calgary from here where I'm staying. I came to this location because it's my favorite stop in Calgary. We got a lot done here yesterday. Once my logbook's reset here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my pre-trip and we're gonna drive over to Airdrie and park right at the gate for the customer in the morning so that when I wake up, I'm already right there and I don't gotta deal with Calgary traffic in the morning getting through the city. I don't wanna waste any time because it's gonna be a rush trip. I have to pick up this load tomorrow and I have to deliver it the day after tomorrow in Brandon, Manitoba, 750 miles away, 1200 kilometers away. It's gonna be a full day of driving to get there and I've gotta deliver it in the morning. And then after that, I'd really like to go home for the evening. I haven't been home in a while, but we'll see. I might, uh, excuse me, oh, interrupting the vlog, come on. I haven't sitting all day. If they need me to keep working through the week, I understand that because the following weekend is Mother's Day and I definitely want to be home for Mother's Day to celebrate it with Britt and go see my mom. So uh, I think her mom is actually coming over as well. So it's going to be a busy weekend. I want to make sure that I'm home for that. And in order for that to happen, I may need, maybe I'll go home Tuesday night, but I'll head back up for a real short one on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, keep me busy for the rest of the week. I don't know what's going to come up. It's hard to tell with the freight market. We'll see what happens. See if I can find something, but I definitely want to go home Tuesday afternoon. But I got all my videos edited, rendered, compressed, uploaded, and I got all the thumbnails done. And I released them all to the members, like one by one. I have to do this all one at a time. I've changed all the titles, change everything on there. Uh, we did a, a, a couple of shout outs at the beginning of the week to uh, Beaver, Bitcoin, to House products, to Bull Snot products and also to PBX Truck Service. Don't forget, there's a truck show coming July 26th at PBX Truck Service in Blumenort, Manitoba. If you're in the area, you can enter your truck. There's a show truck class, there's a working truck class, and there's live music. Doc, Doc Walker's gonna be there, a bunch of other, van, uh, other bands. It's gonna be a lot of fun. My truck's gonna be entered in the working class. I'd love to see you there, July 26th in Blumenort, Manitoba. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We'll talk about it more as the time goes up. I'm gonna do a little bit of promoting for them because we wanna really boost this event and get uh, as many people there as possible. I believe it's their first show. I, I think they're gonna make it an annual show. I won't speak on behalf of PBX right now, but I'm hoping it's gonna be an annual show, but this year at least there's gonna be a show. July 26th, I've said it three times now. July 26th. So I'm gonna get my shoes on here now. I have five hours, gotta eat, gotta do my walk, and gotta shower, and then we're ready to go. I haven't had to reset on the road uh, for quite a long time uh, because of my new uh, regional gig. So it's been odd. I got all my laundry done yesterday too as well. We got a lot done. I'm, I'm ready for another week. So if they keep me out until next weekend, then they keep me out until next weekend. I've been nosed into that spot. It's, I don't nose into a lot of spots all the time, but that one works out because I can back right down the driveway there when I'm done. And it's nice and quiet right there and close to the building. I think it's a pretty, worked out pretty good. I know I locked the doors, but I'm gonna go in back and double check. You guys do this? I know I locked the doors because I even filmed myself locking the doors and you guys saw me lock the doors. But for my peace of mind, I have to go back and check. Look at all these trucks here all waiting for tomorrow. All of our shippers and receivers are all home for the weekend. Must be nice. All these drivers, including myself, are here waiting for you to come back to work. Yeah, I'm trying to do better. I'm not perfect. I'm trying to uh, set a good example to you guys on the internet, to my son, my wife, my family, I'm trying to get out there and be more active. And I still don't eat the greatest. Uh, I can still make improvements, but I'm not perfect. I'm not, cl I'm not claiming to be. 
But I truly believe that the biggest thing that's shortening the lives of truckers is the fact that we just sit all day, day after day after day. And I commented on a post online, uh, something about, you know, the biggest causes of uh, why truckers live on average of 17 years less or something like that. And it's why truckers' lives are shorter. They said, oh, it's because of loneliness and it's because of you know, how dangerous the job is. And they called it the most dangerous job in the world and uh, poor diet. And I, I agreed the most with the poor diet. So I left a big long comment. I was bored sitting in my sleeper. So I left a big long comment on it saying, well, you know, trucking isn't the most dangerous job in the world. Like, come on, let's be real, guys. Let's be, uh, <laughs> let's be honest. Yes, it's a dangerous job. Of course it is, getting out there on the roads. But a lot of the danger on the road is under our control. I mean, going down the mountain, you can take it easy, take it slow. Don't wear out your brakes. Don't heat up your brakes. You know, when the weather gets bad, you can pull off the road. All of those dangers can be avoided, and those are under our control. There are things that aren't under our control. Like We can't control who's on the road with us unfortunately so there, there of course there's dangers on the road and it's dangerous more dangerous than some jobs but I, I put that first point I said I think that you know our armed services police services and fire services might kindly disagree you know at least we're not being shot at regularly usually every day and we're not running into burning buildings usually right that was my first point and then my second point was well loneliness used to be a lot worse of course it's still lonely on the road I agree with it but it's not a killer it's not killing truckers Especially with technology that we have nowadays. Like, I can... I have my phone in my pocket. So do you, right? Everyone's got a phone nowadays. And at the tap of a button, just tapping my screen, I can be face-to-face -face with any one of my loved ones, regardless of where they are on the planet. Instantly. It doesn't matter if they're in Europe, in Australia. It doesn't matter if they're back home in Manitoba. It doesn't matter who it is. I can tap a button face-to-face -face with my, my loved ones. It, social media has brought us all closer together. And I made the point that we were all talking about this on Facebook, right? And all of us were together here on Facebook talking about this and commenting and posting. And, you know, we're sort of brought together with social media. So it's not nearly as bad as it used to be. And loneliness is definitely not a big killer on the road. It's not killing drivers, literally, physically. The biggest thing that is killing truckers and shortening our lifespan, our lifespan by over a decade is the fact that we're not active. The fact that we're not active, and I'm speaking to myself too, because like I said before, I'm not perfect, neither, but I, I want to be a better example. We sit for a living. There's a lot more to it. I do the job, I know that, but we sit for a living. And I couldn't believe the amount of comments I got back. That are just It's like people go on the internet just to be mean to other people, it seems. And then you look at their pages and they got big followings on their page. And you can obviously tell that people are following their page because of how mean they are to other people, right? They think it's funny or something. But anyways, that being aside, putting that aside, the, the biggest thing in my opinion that's killing us is that we're not active. Think of your body like a diesel engine. That's an analogy we can all understand. Our diesel engines are not designed to idle for long periods of time. If you idle your truck for long periods of time, your engine won't last as long gonna get all gunked up with soot you know if you're running deaf you know I'm sorry but if you are that's gonna definitely be a recipe for a regen and even if you're driving a pre-DEF truck idling your engine is known to harm your engine over the long run if you keep idling it day after day after day the engine won't last nearly as long our bodies are the same way and our hearts are the same way our bodies aren't designed to idle they're not designed to just sit there and do nothing. Even though we're driving our truck, we are doing something. We're not just steering wheel holders. Some some of us out here are, but you know, I do a flatbed. I do a lot of physical work, but it's still not the same because my engine, for the most part, the majority of the time, my heart, my ticker, is idling, and I believe that's the biggest factor contributing to our shortened lifespan. So I'm trying to be out here, trying to set an example to just go for a three mile walk every day. It only takes an hour, you set a good pace. You know, at the end of it, especially for the first week, depending on how long you've been idling your heart, idling your body, you know, it's gonna be uncomfortable. Your legs are gonna hurt, your knees are gonna hurt, your feet are gonna hurt. That's normal. I like to use the, the phrase as a sort of jokingly, but it's got some truth to it. Pain is weakness leaving your body. It's gonna hurt at first, it's gonna be uncomfortable and you're not gonna wanna do it. 
You gotta keep doing it. It'll get better. Your body's gotta get used to moving again. So if you take one hour out of your day, find a spot to park somewhere where you're safe. Even if it's just in a truck stop and you just walk around and around your truck, who cares what other people think about you? You know, who cares? Walk around around your truck, walk around the truck stop, walk around the rest area. If you're in a town somewhere, go explore the town a little bit. You can learn a little bit about local history and see the place a little bit. These places that you'd usually just drive right by that you didn't even know existed. You just go for a, an hour walk, that's it, an hour a day. I know we're busy people and I know it's tough to find that time. Believe me, I, I know. But once you get a routine going and you make it a priority, it's not that long. Three miles a day, one hour a day, at least five days of the week. So I'll show you what I use to keep track of my miles here. I go to, I just use Google Fit. You can also use other apps. Many other apps just keep track of where you go. Google Fit, this is how many, how much I've walked around with my phone on me for today. Just 0.2 miles, but I want to do three. So now I go to, I'm not doing an ad for them or anything. I'm just using, telling you what I use. Let's see, and that'll show you where I am. I'll say start walking and this will keep track of my time, my distance, everything like that. It makes it very easy. It'll also keep track of you on the map where you've gone. So the Flying J is right across from Deerfoot Inn Casino. I've gone in there a couple of times. I've said it in past videos, I'm not a big gambler, I'm not a big casino goer. Every now and then they'll go in with like 40, 50 bucks. I know this place because the last two times I went in there, I can't even remember, it's probably like four, five to seven years ago that I went in there. But I remember I went in there once, put in like 20 bucks and I won 150 bucks. So I cashed out and I left. And the next time I was here, I went in there again to that same machine, same thing. I think I put in like 20 and I won 90 or something like that. And then I haven't been back since and I don't even remember which machine it was. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do though. If I win back more than I put in, I cash out and I leave. But yeah, it's a pretty nice place in there. The first part of the walk is the hardest. For the, both the first half mile to a mile, all you think to yourself is like, oh, why did I do this? No, it might rain. Is it gonna rain? Maybe I should go back. Think of every excuse in the book, right? But once you get past that mile, mile and a half, by the time my three miles are up, I don't even really wanna stop. Somebody had a bad day. And we're back. So yeah, that took exactly an hour. And 3.16 miles. Stop. Oh, first we press pause. Then we press stop and save it. And there you go. Oops. Come on. There we go. Whew! Yeah. It rained a little bit. Not too bad. Not too bad. Just a drizzle. I got a little wet. But uh, I'm going to go and have a shower now and get even more wet so it doesn't matter. Thirty-four minutes remaining. Thirty-four minutes and my reset is complete. That means that I can drive another week or another 70 hours in the next seven days here in Canada or 70 hours and eight days in the US. So as soon as my clock clicks over to 36 hours, I'm gonna do a quick pre-trip on this truck, get ready to go. We should be out of here before 11 o'clock for sure. 
and then I've got to drive just about a half hour, 33 miles I think it is, up to Airdrie. And if I do it in the morning, I know there's going to be tons of traffic. And plus then I have to start my day here then, right? And it's going to be such a, a tight race to get to Brandon in time. I want to save this half hour for tomorrow and put that onto tomorrow's day, right? So I want to start from right at the customer or right at the, the shipper, anyways. So that's the plan right now. I'm all suited up, ready to go. I went and had supper, had a shower, did my walk. I'm caught up on everything on the computer. I've got nothing else to do. Now we're just sitting here twiddling our thumbs, tapping our feet, waiting to go. I don't really want to go at this late. I hate like, leaving. I have a good parking spot here. But uh, I think parking right outside the gate at the shipper is a lot better of a spot for tomorrow morning when I wake up. I went back to check behind the truck before I move back. And before I start moving, I always press the brakes a few times to make that air hissing sound at the back of the trailer so that it grabs anyone's attention that might be nearby. I have my four ways on. should be 10 hours before I have to move the truck. So it'll work out perfect. So even if I only stop for eight hours, I still have to make up for the other two hours to make it 10 hours throughout my day uh, in at least half hour increments. All right, how long is this light? Come on, there you go. Now the longest light I've ever seen. This is as close to the gate as I can get. I'm loading right there tomorrow morning. I'm parked up on the street, ready to go. I'll be up nice and early, making sure nobody sneaks in front of me. Because that happens. It's sad and annoying. It's happened to me more than once. It's frustrating when you, you make an effort like this to be at the gate the night before to make sure that you get loaded first. Because I, I have a load that's going to be in a rush. It's going to be a hot load. I've got to move it fast. So that's why I want to get loaded first. So you come here the night before to make sure that... Uh, 
that you get loaded, right? And sometimes you get someone who will show up in the morning and then swing in the gate in front of you and try to get loaded before you. It doesn't happen all the time, but it sure does happen sometimes. I don't get upset over many things, but don't cut the line. I didn't have to come and park here. I could have been, I could have just stayed where I was, but I wanted to, went through all of this effort to come here. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm loading. Uh, some kind of steel products is all I, I know. Probably building products. I think it's going to one of their other locations in Brandon, so it might just be a transfer uh, from one of their locations to the other one. I don't know. Looking in their yard there. Can't really see what it might be. It won't be this lumber here, I don't think. So that's it for today. Nice and relaxing. You know, I was telling you before, I don't reset on the road very often anymore, but I am kind of glad that this reset ended up being in Calgary. This is my favorite Canadian city. I don't like cities very much, but if I had to choose, and I had no roots anywhere else in the country, and I had a lot of money to buy a house here, <laughs> I'd buy a house in probably in southeast Calgary. I was just realizing that in the video here, it looks like I have my high beams on, right? In the background. That's not actually my high beams, those are my running lights. See? Those are just the halos. They're not actually that bright at all, but at nighttime, with this camera, they just sort of dominate that. That area, I don't actually have my high beams on. They're not that bright. If I had my high beams on, you'd know it. But they do light up the road a little bit here, right? Eh? You wanna see what the difference my high beams makes though? Here, watch this, I'll put you up here. Hold on, let me show you. Let me show you. I love these lights. Okay, so that's just the running lights, right? Those are the low beams and those are the high beams. I love lights. All kinds of lights. Maybe that's why I like Christmas so much. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, it's one of my weird quirks. Like this isn't my trailer. I, I wish I had my own trailer because if it was my trailer, we'd have a little chicken light like every six inches all the way down the trailer and we'd have underglow by the axles back here as well oh yes this box over here this would also be polished shiny and i wouldn't have steel rims on here i'd have shiny aluminum rims polished shiny and maybe underglow here Lights back here. A lot more lights back here. Maybe some lights down there. Lights, lots of lights. Well, I slept in this morning, so I'm not tired yet. But I gotta go to bed soon, because, uh, like I said, I've gotta be up early, make sure I'm first in the gate. So. Thanks for hanging out with me today, everybody. We didn't do much, but I'm glad you were here anyways. Please, if you did, if you do enjoy my videos, hit that like button for me. That's the best way you can help. Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. That also helps with the algorithm. So two birds, one stone, I get to hear from you and you help me out, gets uh, the word out to more people. You can share my videos on your Facebook, on your X accounts, wherever you want to share them. And uh, if you want to take it one step further, you can click the join now button. Uh, for like the price of a Starbucks coffee, you can get early access to all my videos if that's what you would like to do. So thanks everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Stay safe out there. Drive safe. Keep your stick on the ice. Pay attention. And use your turn signals. <laughs>